uh, I guess uh, welcome everyone to our uh, our first uh, AMA session uh, that we've hosted at the uh, Cute Company. Uh, I guess we can start with a couple of short introductions before we dive into the question, if you don't know who we are already. Uh, this is actually coming from Oslo, Norway. Uh, the Cute Company is one of their R&D offices here. And uh, I'm Andy Nichols. I have been here for almost 10 years, uh, working at the various you know, iterations of what is now the Cute Company. Um, and I, I work for the graphics team uh, together with with Laszlo. Laszlo. Yes, hello, so I'm Laszlo Ogoch, and uh, yeah, I'm also in the so-called graphics and multimedia team here in Oslo at the Cute Company, and uh, well, I do all sorts of graphics-related things, so, you know, that involves, you know, a number of different platforms, and, you know, we've been working with various graphics APIs, of course, with, you know, I did a lot of stuff with OpenGL, but, you know, no, nowadays we are looking lots of, on, looking at lots of other things as well, so, yeah, let's see. So, just to reiterate, what we need here is really questions, so please post your questions in the questions box or whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really could, I mean, the idea is to have them be, I guess, about the graphics domain, like in Qt, but you can also ask us things as well, like, what are you working on? Uh, what's new? What's... Like that's also uh, like so we just kind of keep it open and uh, make this as uh, I guess fun and informative as possible. So I guess maybe if you have some questions to read already, and we yeah, yeah. So I there. think we can start. So there is there, there are quite some questions already. Yes. Yeah, so the first one is quite straightforward. In your opinion, what is the best resource for learning Vulkan? Well, I think uh, both of us have have had, had this question initially as well, and uh, yeah. I think we've taken maybe slightly different approaches. So how did you, how did you learn Vulkan? What was your approach? Uh, well, mm, I was looking at things. <laughs> it's really <laughs> hard to say. At least I can't really name a single source of uh, material or resources. There is a, like, uh, you know, we started out the hard way, you know, just going over the example code and the spec. Uh, but now, uh, I guess, like, this, like reading a, a graphic spec is pretty hard to swallow. <laughs> it's, it's, it requires a lot of uh, patience. And if you want a little bit more hand-holding, there's a, there's a book out now. Uh, at least I bought it on Amazon and, and read through it. And it is basically going over the spec as well. I'm trying to remember what that that book is called. It's like the it's one of the official. Oh, it's this programming guide or whatever. It's yeah, so it it's basically still going over the spec, but it's, of course it's yes. It's just a little bit more hand holding yes. to keep you focused. But and, of course, that's not a tutorial. No, it's not. So you need additional things. Of course, now nowadays I think there is quite a lot of good material. So you know, examples, tutorials yeah. out there. So. In any case, what I would recommend is, of course, to look at multiple ones, so don't just go with a single one, because, you know, maybe somebody's code does some things differently, and maybe there are some, something that is somehow specific to a given device, so you never know, so that's why it's better to look at the widest possible range of examples, mm. uh, at least when getting started. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, and of course, yeah. I, I must say that, of course, uh, with Qt 5.10, you have this additional option of, uh, of looking at the examples that ship with Qt, because oh, yes. we have five <laughs> excellent Vulkan examples uh, included with Qt in 5.10, which is going to be released soon. So, yeah, that's also an option. <laughs> Good plug. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so next question. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to change the OpenGL version during or while a QML application is running? Uh, I know this is not supposed to happen, but maybe some workaround ideas. I wonder if, it, like specifically with this question, if it's uh, referring to like OpenGL version as in OpenGL desktop or like 4.0 versus ES you know, like the Windows. So I suppose this is about changing to a context for a different version and profile, which sounds a bit odd. I mean, I guess, <laughs> I would think you could do one but not the other. Like, for example, you couldn't, probably couldn't change between ES 
and desktop GL at runtime, but you could destroy the context and request a new context. Like for example, if you wanted a, you had a 4.4 .4, uh, OpenGL profile and you wanted to change to an ES, or not an ES, but a, like an OpenGL 2.0 or some kind of compatibility profile context. You could do that at runtime, but you'd have to tear down everything and build it back up. Yes, of course, for QML, Qt Quick, of course, that, what would that mean? I mean, that in practice, that means that, of course, you need to basically destroy the QQ, Q Quick window or view and basically start from scratch, yeah. which is not necessarily ideal. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that would be, it, it would be fairly destructive because we kind of assume that that stuff lives, lives for the lifetime of that QML application. All right, so we have a pretty long question next, which is basically, do you have any suggestions, suggest, suggestions for improving the frame rate when scrolling a tree view? We've tested both Q3 view and QML tree view, and both have a fairly low scrolling frame rate when full screened, frequently lower than one frame per second. That's a bit weird. Uh, and the performance of the QML tree view is particularly bad. Hmm. Oh, you know, when there are more than 20 or so columns. Oh, and the uh, tree has roughly 1,000 rows and 1,000 columns. And the current implementation, yeah, it uses QAbstract item model, and there are several proxies. And the view that inherits from Qt view. Oh, and it's using PyQt. Hmm. Uh, and the bottlenecks so far point towards Qt view. I guess with I mean, I guess if it's QTree view, uh, the the like the widget based one. I mean, it it really comes down to uh, the custom delegates. I think uh, if you're not doing too much magic already, if it's just like text, I mean, at least the widget implementation does a lot of work to try and mitigate uh, a lot of uh, potential performance problems. But what really gets in the way is uh, these custom delegates, like if you're doing something other than just text, or if you have widget controls inside of your uh, tree or your, your items, like depends on like custom rendering stuff. I know that that's a really big deal or can be a really big deal with widgets. Uh, in Qt Quick, uh, I think at least with the tree, or the at least the table view control that I guess people kind of hack into a tree view, uh, it's, uh, it has problems when there's lots and lots of columns. Uh, I try to remember, I can think of very distinctly of a demo that maybe someone was doing in the hallway here to, to show like, yeah, I think it was in the context of like how we fix this internally because we acknowledge as a problem with low, when you have lots and lots of columns in a table view uh, with Qt Quick now and it just becoming really sluggish. Uh, so, uh, I. I suspect something's coming there, but I don't think there's a whole lot that can be done like as is right now with the current one, aside from don't do too much custom stuff in your individual delegates and uh, to, uh, yeah, try not to use so many columns. I mean, I know that that's a terrible thing to say, but it's it's more trying to play towards the, the how the, if it's performance sensitive code, trying to play towards the, I'm trying to think of what the word is for that, the benefits of, of the tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not, not, a, not a great answer. It's, it's hard to see, say exactly without seeing code. Uh, that's usually how we do those things if customer shows us the code and we're like, oh yeah, here's some concrete things that you could do to yeah, yeah. make I mean, this we'll better. Start <laughs> yes. applications. Yep, all right. So there's a very cool question and uh, it's a pretty wide a far-reaching question. Uh, which is what is the best way to dynamically load a 3D object in into a 3D scene this cute? Oh, so of course this is a good question, <laughs> but uh, there are so many answers to this, right? Because you know there are so many ways to do 3D this cute. Because, well, of course the again the traditional way is that. Well, of course the question would be that what else do you need? So of course. Yeah, you definitely you know, like want to do yourself application. some favors uh, as far because as like how to get that that data into what, the scene, or because you know, of course, the traditional way would be you know like in Qt four times. Of course, if you need widgets, 
if you need widgets, then of course, you know, you could use QG widget or the modern equivalents. And then, you know, you just have your custom OpenGL code, OpenGL render, which is then integrated with Qt. And uh, if it's simple enough, like, you know, you, have, you don't really need very fancy things, that might often be good enough. Well, I guess, or, well, but for, for, I guess this question, though, if you have, if, if you just have a model that you want to show in, like, like, render in 3D with Qt, and you don't necessarily want to write a renderer, or uh, in, in this case, you know, you just maybe want to, like, do something in Blender or someone, you bought some asset online, and you want to have that in your scene, show that somewhere in a scene. Uh, I guess the easiest way right now is probably with, or with the existing re release stuff is, is with, you know, Qt 3D, and it has the ability to actually, like, load in, like, models in certain formats. Yeah, of course, there, again, you have multiple ways, because it, again, depends what format is it in. You know, Qt3D has, like, a mesh element, but that, you know, only supports certain formats, and then there's a, is it scene loader, or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. which might handle more formats, so, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in whether or not you're you're doing it yourself, or if you're doing it with Qt, uh, like, you're going to have to, like, convert it from some exchange format, like FBX, uh, into, like, you know, whatever mesh, like, you want to, like, render with. And at least with Qt3D, uh, we use, uh, we have a way of just pulling, pulling in random assets with, uh, we use the, this third-party library called Asymp, and uh, that, uh, it'll actually convert the FBX into, you know, the mesh data that we can then digest with, with uh, Qt3D. But you could, if you were to write your own render, it's a similar yeah. situation where you need to actually load in an OBJ file or some kind yeah, of other. Yeah, but, but of course, if if you want the best way, of course, there's a, there's more to this. So things get fairly complicated if you think of you know asset conditioning. So of course, you won't necessarily want to load an OBJ file as is. So you know things can get very complicated. Yep. But actually, Qt3D has some enablers for this already, because we did some of these even like you know converting to an efficient binary format and so on and so on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, and I guess from the highest level perspective, uh, with soon we'll be releasing this uh, Q3D Studio, where Ugh. it's even simpler to just kind of you know drag and drop a model if yeah. you just want to show a 3D object. Yes, so that's interesting because of course, like we said, these the existing, the currently released things, you know, there's Q3D or you can roll your own, but there's there will be. Another way, which is probably simpler than the current ones, which is using Q3D Studio, where you basically drag and drop the stuff into the tool, and then, uh, yeah, integrate that into your app, so the Q3D Studio scene. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, something Q3D related. Uh, I know how to draw a cuboid using Q3D Access cuboid mesh for example, but how do I simply draw a line, for example, to visualize mm -hmm. a coordinate system in the Q3D scene? Yeah, I guess that's a bit, uh, that's a bit more difficult, because really with, I guess it depends on how you actually want to draw the line. Uh, there's a couple of different ways you normally do this in OpenGL. Well, yeah, you're thinking of the, yeah, the drawing old... that switch into GL lines. Or yes, you could, you could do that, but also... I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not actually sure if Q3D has a, an equivalent to that, because we usually work with meshes, right? So, yeah. Uh, or that sort of data. I guess I'm trying, trying to think of how, how, for example, we did this with the <laughs> 3D scene editor, actually rendering with a separate projection with drawing the lines exactly to try to get the kind of grid behavior that that you I guess you're you're asking about specifically. I guess with a geometry uh, renderer so though you actually because you can say so uh, for example well okay that's a manual test. So so yes for example you know Qt3D really has the geometry renderer thing so you could set the primitive type to line strip or line or whatever. So, oh, yeah. but, but then you still need a geometry, so that's really not straightforward, because, yeah. But I'm looking at now, yeah, I guess it's just an example. Yeah, two to parts do being, like, forms. actually creating, like, the lines, like, getting the data for the lines uh, is one thing, the actual mesh data, and then a second of, like, defining how you yeah. render that mesh. 
and you know rather than using the okay. typical triangles. Okay, but anyway, so the answer is really change the. So you need a custom geometry renderer and change the primitive type. Okay. Yeah. Because the default is I don't know I do triangles or triangle strips, but yep. of course you want something lines. So. Okay, good. So there's actually a way. <laughs> okay, next thing. Uh, as Qt does not seem to be developing SVG at the moment in regards to animations, what is the suggested way to add animations slash effects to buttons and so on within C++? Animations and button within C++. Um, you mean, so I presume this mean, means widgets? Yeah, probably. Be because if it was Qt quick, then it's kind of straightforward, then you would use the animation. You would just animate things. Yeah. In, in QML. I guess in, in widgets, though, it's a little bit more challenging. Uh, yeah. Like, we do have the animation framework inside of, like, that was designed. The animation framework was actually designed for widgets before uh, we had Qt Quick. I guess it was 4.7, 4.6. Maybe 4.6 is where that actually went in. And there is, a, like, some support for, you know, using these similar animatable properties that you have in uh, Qt Quick from C++ on widgets. Uh, it's just, it's a little bit harder to work around just the way that, that widgets are laid out and, and generally you end up painting a lot of stuff yourself like anything you want to like flow around. You'll have to like manually paint <laughs> within a single widget. It's, it's yeah. so, fairly non-trivial. Yeah, so of course you can have your own animated images like say in a button but, but to really animate some of the button or apply effects that's of course more limited with widgets. Of course you have the old, there are, there's that effect framework yeah. from Qt4 times which supports a few simple effects like, I don't know, blur or whatnot. So that's still there and that, that yeah, supports I, I guess widgets, it's a bit different, but, like the way styling uh, works with widgets, it's hard to like animate yeah. that, that styling more than just a, like a few, like mm. changing a few frames. It, I guess the way it's typically done is like, you create a so, custom widget and like define all the animated behavior I in that widget. It's it's a lot more difficult, and I mean it is one of the reasons why Qt Quick is a thing now. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think really that's that's the answer. Uh, yes, the next one. Well, this might be a bit difficult to answer. The hardware stereo supporting QOpenGI widget does not seem to work. There is only a single color buffer in the FBO prepared by Qt when entering PaintGL. How do you deal with the left and right eyes? I've, I have never used that stereo yeah. rendering thing that way. Uh, every time I've ever done anything related to this has been very manually, but not the built-in like GL stereo, re stereo rendering. I'm not sure if you have any insights on that. No, not much, but I know that, of course, the uh, FVO stuff, what we do, Jared, that knows nothing about this, so it's yeah. not surprising that you have a you know, single color buffer, single color attachment, so. Like the QF, at Q Big. frame buffer object stuff, like really hard codes, not, yeah. like, like a specific, it's kind of like very convenient, but like not very flexible, because then like if you want to attach like multiple Mm. Uh, like render buffers and like use it in a very specific way. It's hard to do that. I guess the times I've had to do very specialized frame buffer object stuff, I rather than use Q frame buffer object, I'll have to like manually do it with OpenGL. <sighs> so yeah, and of course an alternative, if that's suitable for you, is uh, you know switch to Q OpenGL window or because yeah, then you don't don't use the FBO, you go to mm. a window surface. So then presumably, you know, you have the whatever the system provides. And you can enable or re request a stereo format on the, in the Q-surface format for the context and the window. And So using, like, so, uh, so even if you want to embed it in a, a widget hierarchy, uh, you, can still, you can still do that's that. That's why I'm saying that, of course, it might not always work. But if, 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 if your UI is such that you, know, you, know, you are happy with just having a box and you don't need this complicated you know, cases when all you have to care about clipping and stacking and so on, which is what QOpenGL JIT is for. I'm just saying that the stereo thing, that's pro that probably works better in a plain Q window or QOpenGL window at mm. the moment. But uh, by all means, of course, if, if this is really something that should work, then of course uh, I think it might be a good idea to create a, you know, a report in the Qt project Jira for this. 
Yeah, definitely. That's <laughs> that's how we know things are. Yes. Think, especially things we're not like trying ourselves. Yeah, especially because I remember, for example, regarding stereo on plain cube windows, we had bugs for that during mm. the lifetime of Cube Five. So it's important to report this. Yep. Okay. Okay. Qt 5.10 has Vulkan enablers. Yes. Should we expect to see a full Vulkan rendering backend for Qt in the future? <laughs> yes, that's, the that's very, a good, very question. good question. Indeed, that is something that gets asked a lot. And honestly, not just regarding Vulkan, but maybe regard for other APIs. So think of Meta, for example. And it's a you know, complicated question because of you know, the different technologies in Qt. So there's Qt Quick, you know, of, of, of course we don't have a Vulkan rendering backend there, or of course there's Qt 3D, more and more important. Again, that has an OpenGL backend today. I know that there has been some research happening, you know, for, for a Vulkan backend there, which is good. So there are steps, but, uh, Oh, and of course, there are things like QPainter, if you if remember, also has a GL2 paint engine. So yeah, these don't really have equivalents for other graphics APIs at the moment, and uh, there is no you know, fixed, fixed answer. So basically, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it just, I guess at this point, the, the better thing is, like, it's something we're thinking about. I mean, we kind of see that, like, something like this will have to be done in the future, but, like, definitely not, like, in the near term, like it's not something it it's, it's a bigger problem to uh, to solve overall. Yeah, okay. So of course we can say that you know Qt five eleven five twelve. So it's unlikely that, or highly unlikely that these things will happen in this time frame. I guess it's it's smaller but, smaller like iterative things uh, at this point. Like trying to you know get the underlying things like you said in five ten with the Vulkan enablers. Yes. Uh, looking at uh, other. Uh, enablers for like say metal and, and things like that and like trying to like lay a framework for actually implementing yes. stuff like this. At the same time long term this is going to happen mm -hmm. so that's yeah. not a question because this is so cute won't stay with OpenGL only that's pretty clear yeah, we... but the timeline <laughs> so this is a long term thing right? Yeah <laughs> yeah the, the space has changed we see the we see the writing on the walls. <laughs> All right, uh, next one is somewhat long, but uh, I have a custom QQIC item that draws a graph in Qt 5.6. It seems like the whole QQIC item is updated if I update just a single point. Hmm? If my QQIC item is full screen, frame rate is low. If it's just a single pixel in size, it's super fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it possible to update just a small region of a QQIC item and not have OpenGI redraw the whole QQIC item? So I, the main question here is uh, that how exactly is that item implemented? Because I guess there's a, there's a couple of yes. right ways and wrong ways to do this. Like for example, if that custom QQIC item actually was a QQIC painted item, mm -hmm. then yeah. I would I mean, and I kind of think that it might be based on like the description here, uh, because there you know it, the more you're updating, the more pixels you're touching, the more uh, expensive it is. But yeah, I mean that's. But so, so of course that's not a bad way to implement these bots. But of course you have to be aware that then is then dependent on the size. So then it's perfectly natural that once it grows big, especially if you are using the default path, which is like drawing into a cube image, mm -hmm. you know, use your raster paint engine, and then you know somehow use use that as a texture. I well, guess yes, that will have problems on especially hardware that can't really manage this when mm -hmm. the size gets big. But of course if 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 it's implemented differently. Yeah. So if you are using OpenGL, so it's, like you know, like you have custom your custom, scene, right? although, yeah, because that's possible too. Well, you mean, um, yeah, right, right rendering to an FPM because you could provide, instead of... Uh, you could provide your custom geometry and custom materials, right? That's possible. You know, that's how we implement shapes, for example, yep. in 510. Oh, but then it's a good point because uh, if, for example, there's an FBO, then again that has a similar problem. Yep. That it depends on the size, and then there's just this again blending but involved. If you want to, maybe if you uh, want to like look at solutions to this, uh, like it is actually possible to like using the the scene graph, like the C++ scene graph API, to actually have multiple nodes in one item. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how the the graph is actually drawn, 
but this might actually be something to like look into it, yeah. how you can split this up and potentially into different nodes uh, that the that the actual render can consume in a more efficient way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't think we can really. Yeah, it's tell, it's, tell it's a hard more, thing but, to answer without but actually knowing more details. I think that details. if you are having like a backing Q image or FBO, then yeah, then it's most likely caused by that. So then, you know, you might need to do some things differently to 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 avoid that. Uh, next one. Can we expect scene 2D updates slash improvements? Scene 2D. So I'm wondering that does this refer to the scene 2D thing in Qt 3D? Because I'm not. Because that's what we call scene 2D. Okay. So you know the way to have a Qt quick scene render to a texture via Qt quick render control, and you have this scene 2D element. Okay. I hope it's it's that because I think that's the only thing we call scene 2D. Yeah. But. Although I'm a bit confused because updates improvements isn't that a new feature in 5.10? I'm not actually sure. Or, I'm, I think Scene 2D has been there. Or is it been, has it been there for 5.9? I'm not sure. I think it was there for 5.9 but didn't have proper input support or something like that. Oh. Well, in that case, the answer is simple. So then there should be some improvements in 5.10 uh, because I think it has full input support now. Oh, yeah, it's something like that. I uh, I know that's one of those cases that you know, at least like blending Qt Quick with our 3D, like both Qt 3D and 3D Studio, like that's that's definitely something we're very keen on, especially if that's what you're referring to. So uh, we'll be trying to improve that story in the future, both for you know performance and functionality. Uh, but it's you know it's 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 an ongoing thing, part of the larger story. Of bringing everything together. All right. If you were to implement an expanding list, how would you do it? Example of example of lists that would have fruits and vegetables. Uh, if you click the fruit, you would then have a list expand below. Ah, oh, yeah, showing apples, oranges, other types. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, since I guess it, it really depends on if you're if you're widgets, you know, tree view is your your answer mm -hmm. there. Like that's the that's the way to do it in Qt Quick with Qt Quick controls. At least the way I've done it uh, is I start with a, a list view, and then uh, in the item delegate for the list view, like that is the you know the sub delegate. Basically, I, I create a, a series of like sub delegates. So it, in some cases, like you end up with another list inside of your list. Uh, at least that's how I've implemented a expanding list before. And I think there's actually a example, if I remember correctly, showing showing how this is done. And I'm not sure if it's in it, it might be in Qt Quick controls. Uh, I think it it might be an example. It might be a manual test. But I was able to find something to base my implementation off of. Uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's part of the the tree view discussion. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Uh, speaking of quick controls, is there a possibility that in the future the quick, Qt Quick Controls 1 desktop and Qt Quick Controls 2 embedded will be source compatible? That's uh, a good question. Yeah. So I think the answer is no. Yes. Yeah. So the, the reason they're, well, 1 and 2 is that they had to break uh, compatibility. Uh, it's, I mean, it had a lot to do with the, the styling API more than anything. But uh, yeah, so I think the quick answer is no. And but I think we'll have some solutions, uh, I guess, to fill the gap with you know with, with the reason why people use Qt Quick Controls One. I think like you'll see a lot more of that like native-ish looking use cases uh, coming in Qt Quick Controls Two going forward, and they'll continue to be source compatible. Yeah, so I think the story for. Quick controls one is simply that the API is basically frozen now. Yeah. So of course the new development is mostly happening in controls two. Yeah. All right. So there's a question, which is yeah, I Ooh, see shit. that. You know, will there be any effort to, to improve performance in the QML shape extension, which means this new shape type, which oh, yeah. we are introducing in 5.10, as it appears to lack performance currently, and it yeah post, points to the blog post. Yes, the, not the, the QNA not painter thing. Well, yes. Not we, just we us that's all that blog post. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 
I actually commented on that post, and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely interesting. So uh, I think it would need a bit more investigation because it's hard to tell at the moment that you know what, what exactly is happening there. Yeah, I guess the the bigger question uh, is it, it's on our radar. <laughs> but yes, so yeah, we know about that. Yes. <laughs> Then, ooh, touch interactions. Ooh. I've been trying to get touch interactions implemented, and my interactions seem to always clash. For example, one touch should scroll, and two fingers should zoom. However, when zooming, it picks up one finger touch, and scroll scrolls a slice or two rather than zooming, which is the intended interaction. How would you approach this problem? So. Yeah, I'm not sure if you are the best people to answer this, but there are excellent <laughs> news here because in Qt 5.10, this is in Qt Quick, right? Yeah. So I strongly hope that it doesn't say, but this is this is in Qt Quick. Yeah. Because there is actually a, a lot, so really a lot of work happening there, and I think many of those things, this new input, you know, pointer handlers and whatnot, I think that's coming in 5.10, but maybe it's a tech preview. I'm not actually sure. But this is a big thing in 5.10, that uh, to improve exactly things like this, you know, that you, you could, this, uh, especially these multi-finger cases. So, yeah, yeah I, I, actually, I think there, there's yeah. actually a, uh, there was a World Summit talk that's, uh, that's available that we have now that uh, oh, Sean yes. Rutledge actually yes. made. So look up Sean Rutledge, yes. Uh, yeah, for the cute, cute a, World uh, Summit 2017 talks, uh, check out his talk on pointer handlers because I think it addresses exactly the problem that you're asking about. Yes, so the alternative is basically search for pointer handlers. I think this is what these new things, uh, they run under that name, so pointer handlers, and cute 5 then. Also, as a bit of information, there will be uh, another webinar on Thursday, the 7th of December, on pointer handlers for Fluent applications oh, by yeah. the same uh, Sean Rutledge. So make sure you uh, check that out and uh, sign up for it as well. Thanks. <laughs> Excellent. OK. Then, uh, for 3D models, can you add support for GLTF? Oh, yeah. But uh, I mean, for which technology, though? Because Qt3D does have this. And I have even seen some GLTF2 developments. Yep. Yeah, so I guess there already is something. So like, uh, at least we wrote the. Uh, I guess it was pre 1.0 uh, at that point. But so that was GLTF 1 yeah. from two years ago, what we've been so, working on. So we did the initial uh, port to that where you could actually take a GLTF file and import it into uh, Qt 3D, uh, and it actually will put it into your SANE with the correct materials and, and, and the models. Um, and second it, thing. And in fact, we also had the, you know, the clever, the QGLTF thing, so the infrastructure yes. to convert from other formats to GLTF. Yes. Anyway, and then uh, I know at least in the animation framework, uh, it's actually they use GLTF there as well. Like uh, so, you can actually import uh, like skeletal animations uh, via GLTF. That's a new thing that I know that uh, Sean Harmer from KDAB actually he part of his animation talk at World Summit he mentioned this. Yeah, and I mean in the when it comes to loading plane geometry. Well, again, I think that's a 510 thing, but okay. I, I can't say for sure it is this 59 or 510, but GLTF2 support has been introduced yeah. in Qt3D. So, yeah, yeah so it's thing. At least with, yeah, with, at least with Qt3D, it's, uh, it's, it's already, already there. Okay, next thing, QQuick Frame Buffer Object. I've had a bit of an issue with the QQuick Frame Buffer Object synchronized functionality. How does it get triggered on demand? So it's looking it up. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's so so so. What you have there is that if you check the API, so the Qt Frame Buffer Object Renderer, so this inner class has an update function, and that is really your entry point to trigger an update or just request an update because that will lead to you know lead to re-rendering, and that will, I think, involve both synchronizing and then rendering. So call update, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, 
you, you're going to love this question. I'd like to use QGraphics U in a desktop application. <laughs> Is there a way I can do this and still leverage the GPU as much as possible? So uh, aside from the fairly well-documented trick of using a, Q, a QGL widget or a QOpenGL widget as the viewport for the graphics, uh, the graphics view, like I think that set viewport is part of the scroll view uh, part of graphics view, and there's a trick where you know you basically create a QGL widget and set that as uh, you know the viewport, and then it will use the OpenGL Paint Engine, uh, QPainter OpenGL Paint Engine for that. And then there are another couple of tricks uh, like setting certain flags so that it's not you know trying to optimize for partial updates and things like that. Uh, but other than that, I mean that that's really the only trick you can do with graphics view to you know to increase performance. It's really about how you use graphics view more than you know general. If you want graphics view to perform well, you have to do things that it likes. <laughs> so and I think that's fairly well documented in our like graphics view overview documentation. Uh, what the what the specializations of graphics view are and what the certain flags are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so something about Qt3D. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I want to transform from a right-handed coordinate system oh. to a left-handed one. Yeah, I mm. talk about it. Therefore, I have to rotate and mirror slash reflect. I didn't find a mirror transformation in Qt3D, so I used the scaling function and so on and so on. It's, and it seemed to work, but the meshes still looked somehow inside out. Do you have any idea how to do that instead? So, I mean, we've been doing something similar, for example, you know, when, 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 you know, we've been working on this thing to run Qt3D Studio scenes on top of Qt3D. And for example, this came up there too, that it seems that the default so, you know, Qt3D Studio likes to use the left-handed system by default. So, I don't think there's any magic solution because what we did, you know, just really have those custom transforms and play these matrices and whatnot, and then, you know, just okay. ha have, ha have something that, that, that's basically correct, but I don't think there's any shortcut to this. Yeah, I mean, if you want to see an example of that, you could probably check out, our, like, the code we've been working yeah. on is open source yeah. as well, so you could probably check out uh, some of the things we've been doing there uh, as an yeah. example uh, for how to, how, to, how to do that. Uh, that's the... Uh, uh, it's called Q3D. Q3D, if, uh, Q3D Studio, Q3D Runtime. Yeah, so if you look up Q3D dash Runtime, that's the repo name, and then there's a Q, Q3D as scene manager class, which is a uh, quite big, and then inside there are, I don't know, maybe you could find some things. Search for left-handed. Yeah. But there should be some comments marking that. Uh, I, just I, like yeah. this is why we're doing this crazy thing here. So anyway, I'm not <laughs> sure how much that helps, but. Uh, yes, we don't have a good I'm, I'm answer. I'm just saying but... that, <laughs> yes, that, that is the way, what you are doing already, <laughs> pretty much, I think. All right. Um... Then, uh, moving from Qt 486, we have many custom components written using declarative mm. items, so this is Qt Quick 1, right? Using file Qt 5 Plus, it was easy to rewrite those to use Qt Quick Painted item, but is this the best option for custom components? I mean, it's the easiest, certainly. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, you're using it the intended way. Uh, if you're seeing that there are performance problems, like I guess it depends on the platform you're actually deploying to and like how complex the controls are. But if you're actually seeing that like one or two of your controls are like actually causing like frame drops on like maybe lower end hardware, uh, there are better ways to do to do this. Uh, Yes, and I mean, we, we, we touched this a bit in a previous question because, of course, the alternative is, well, you know, use the SYNGRAPH APIs and, you know, use SYNGRAPH nodes. But then, of course, the question is the content of your custom item because in some cases, if it's, say, composed of some simple images, rectangles, text, then, you know, you have those simple, they are not text, but those simple helper, you know, SYNGRAPH nodes. But if you need something complicated, then of course it's the question is that you know can you do that you know directly using custom geometry or in implementing a custom materials, you know, and then of course that would be fully accelerated because then you would skip all the you know Q painted item stuff. But uh, 
the feasibility of this is depend on depends on the contents of those items and you know, what do you want to see so yes but if that's not feasible then quick painted item that is a common way yes it's a yeah. commonly used solution here if you just want to have some Q painter based content then yeah that's it <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just trying to scroll here so we have a desktop application using the old graphics scene. We display video on this with overlays oh, based on analyzing the video. All right. We currently use a Q image, not QPix map, and so we do not have accelerated video because we need access to the bits so that we can analyze the video using OpenCV. Yeah. Is there an approach that will allow hardware accelerated video but still access the bits and pass that to OpenCV? Uh, well, yes, but <laughs> so of course the part, the OpenCV part that's a bit out of Qt's domain, right? Because that's a third, yeah. third party. <laughs> and of course, uh, if the video is done using Qt multimedia, I think. Oh, that's again a good question because it it, it really depends because again it depends on the platforms, because I know that on some platforms you could install a video, so there we have these video filters where you could just process the individual Q video frames and if you are on a platform where the video frame actually contains for example an OpenGL texture, I think that's the case on Android at least or maybe Mac OS, mm -hmm. then of course in theory it's possible to you know do something with that texture, so not reading back but you know passing it to some other API. But if you are not on such a platform, you know, if your video frame is just, you know, raw image data, then that's not very ideal for this. So, so the answer is it depends, unfortunately. So there are some platform specifics in play here. I guess as long as you're at the, the level where you're using QImage and QPixMap, and these are like in like generally user space style things, maybe QPixMap less less so, but like generally like the performance sensitive stuff here is like yeah you want to keep everything on the GPU if it's OpenGL and then passing that to some something that also can like read OpenGL textures and maybe do other like GPU operations on it I mean it, it's a bit different way of thinking about it but with mm -hmm. the, the kind of things you're mentioning in the question I think you're kind of stuck with QImage if you're going to read bits. Yep. Okay can you please can you please provide tips on using the list view Cache buffer property. Uh, it's mm. been a long time since I've had to yeah. had to deal with that. So I, I, unfortunately, I don't have any. Uh, uh, I don't think I can add more than what's in the document. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it's been a while since my uh, support days uh, dealing with that particular thing. But uh, yeah, sorry, I don't know the answer to that one off the top of my head. Mm. Okay, let's see. I think we are getting close to the end of the list. So I have a model view thing, a file search dialog, which has the following issue. When the view is updated, the widget blocks, blocks, which is quite visible when doing an intensive search. Is there a way to avoid this somehow? For example, draw the updates in some non-visible and then set it as the widget surface. I mean, I guess th this comes back to if, you know, with Qt, at least Qt GUI, uh, doing things with widgets, everything is drawn in the, you know, the main GUI thread, the same one that you call exec on, uh, right, your call exec with Qt application on, and if you do anything that blocks there, if you're doing something that's modal, you're doing some, anything there, like, uh, it's going to cause problems, and, you know, the solution, is, uh, you know, whether you like it or not, is probably, you know, using threads. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I can only say that you know, try to reduce the load on the main thread, so, you know, something is too expensive there, so it just... Yeah, and, and, and you can, like, I mean, if you, if it's, a, like, a rendering operations that you want to show something and you're doing something expensive, I mean, you, you granted you can't, like, render directly to a widget from another thread, but you can render to a queue image and then pass that over to the main thread to be rendered, and I guess that's the 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 easy answer to you know you know rendering graphics on on another thread but you know if it's non graphical operations you can also like you know do that uh, as well on a different thread and in some cases use the the you know the convenience APIs like with uh, 
provided by Qt Concurrent. Yes. So there's an update here for the previous video question that the platforms are Mac and Windows. Okay. So, so yes, but like I said, I think there will be these differences what you can do because on Windows, I think you will have plain, you know, image data. Yeah, I think so. It's it, mm. at least it's a if you're using Qt Multimedia, it makes things a lot more difficult than it would be to like, say for example, you know, using Direct Show directly and then using handles to that. Uh, it like. Qt Multimedia kind of complicates things when you're trying to use CV for for the non like the, the simple case that you're mentioning, which is very heavy performance-wise, heavy cost mm -hmm. that is. Okay, and what is the status of SyncGraph rendering in the latest LTS version 5.9? Is it fully functional, or are there some missing features to be completed in later versions? or scene graph based rendering. Yes, I wonder what that Yeah, I was a bit curious that that question that because to. <laughs> like typically like so so what we refer to as the scene graph is the you know the cute quick scene graph and like there I mean since 50 like the cute quick scene graph has been fully functional uh, with 5.8 we added additional adaptations that they do have some you know limited functionality just because it's hard to you know, implement the same things. Like, for example, with the software renderer, the scene graph, scene graph based software rendering, like, there are certain things we can't do because, uh, you know, you don't have shader effects with, uh, like, OpenGL shader effects with uh, the raster paint engine. So it's, it's, will never be feature parity with the existing. But in general, like, with the Qt Quick scene graph, like, that is uh, feature complete. Okay. Yep. Oh, that's an interesting one. It seems everyone is asking you about technical issues. So, what other cool stuff are you excited about them being available to cute enthusiasts? So, I mean, mm. uh, cool stuff. Uh, I think definitely the stuff that's happening with Qt 3D Studio uh, for that's that's going to be good for everyone. Both uh, you know the less technical people who want to do cool graphical stuff. Uh, but aren't necessarily like uh, you know graphics wizards that that live and breathe linear algebra and matrices. Uh, it's you know it's you know this drag and drop you know design like putting things into your scene, actually setting it up. You know designers can use it, and then like behind the scenes, uh, like actually you know in integrating it into your app is quite easy. You know just putting a layer into your app, and you know you can put other things on top of it or below it or whatever. Uh, I think that's that's going to be really exciting, and and we're at, we've actually been working on, uh, you know, making this actually render with Q3 so that you can you know extend it further uh, yourself and you know mix and match with with Q3D, and I think there's a lot of exciting things in in that space coming, and to look forward to. Oh yeah, so I mean, general one of the exciting things in graphics these days, of course, it's a 3D area. So, yeah, let's see. Oh, meanwhile, a new question came in. Hmm. QMovie is slow in uh, 486, high CPU mm -hmm. usage, on embedded. Yeah. Has this been improved on Qt5, or are there better methods for displaying small movies on embedded devices? OK, so QMovie is the, the so that's MNG, a, that's the a, moving PixMap. So, yeah, so it's a widget-based thing to you know yeah. have some animated images. So I don't, so of course, I don't think that we can, we should expect any improvements or, you know, too, too many changes in that area because it's, you know, pretty much works the same way. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is just, you know, a series of, uh, you know, like MNGs, which is motion picks or motion PNG and then, and GIFs and that, that's all that supports. Uh, I think, uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's too much, too much work there uh, or too much things that have been done in that, in that arena. I think, Fortunately, at least in the embedded space, even the low-end hardware tends to have uh, proper H.264 decoders and stuff now, so it uh, has become less and less of a problem. But uh, well, yeah. So if you have you know real video files, then of course it's yeah. Then there are you know other options. <laughs> yeah. So of course then there are a lot better ways. You know whatever is most efficient on the embedded device in question. Yeah. Of course, unfortunately, there are quite often, you know, 
dependencies on the platform, so you know, it mm -hmm. really depends which device are you on, and so on, and so on. So, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Of course, an alternative is that uh, if 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 it's an embedded device with you know having a GPU or something, then of course an obvious alternative is to try try doing something with Qt quick. But of course that might be a big thing to migrate. Yeah. And then, hmm, I'm not exactly sure what would be the replacement for QMovie then. But yeah. I mean, the image element can play GIFs. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I didn't <laughs> know that, but yes. And of course the sprite item. Oh yeah, so Qtweek also has this sprite engine thing, so who knows, that might be suitable too, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, so I think my list here is all covered here, and time-wise, I think. Yeah, I mean, I we think at anyways, we're, anyway at, at we've kind of... Slot, so <laughs> this is pretty much perfect, in a way, because I think, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I guess if uh, if there are no big big questions, then I guess uh, mm -hmm. we're done then. And uh, I thank you guys for yeah. for joining us. Uh, it's been great answering questions, and we hope to hope to hear from you soon. And mm -hmm. hopefully, we'll get to do more things like this in the future. So, yeah, thanks everyone. Yep, thanks. Yeah. Definitely, thank you all so much for joining, and thank you, of course, Laszlo and Andy for taking the time. Um, if you have any more questions, you can send them via email to info at q.io. Also, if you like this format, please let us know. Maybe we'll make more of those in the future. And uh, also make sure to send us some more suggestions for topics you would like us to cover. Um, oh, if you enjoyed yourself, we have a couple more webinars lined up. And the next one will be on Tuesday, the 21st of November. And uh, yeah, that one's sure to stir up some controversy, as it's called Qt or HTML5, a million dollar question. Um, which is better in which cases? Which saves you more time? Which saves you money? Uh, make sure you sign up for that one and participate. Until then, I wish you a great day, and until next time, goodbye. Yes, bye.